Hello, so we have here a 12 mini that is currently charging up. Uh, I'm being told uh, that it's restarting. It shows the battery percentage here. Uh, it's now low, it's 9%. Uh, it is fast charging, so it's fine. The problem is that uh, apparently the phone is restarting. And I think from the conversations I had with the uh, shop that sent it that they replaced the battery and at some point it didn't show the percentage. Um, so we can go and uh, have a look uh, in the logs. Uh, this is a language that is I don't understand this language. Uh, let me connect it to the computer. Uh, and we're gonna use a software called, let me remember, I don't remember how it's called, uh, the iDevice Panic Log Analyzer. Yeah, so we're gonna use that. I'm gonna disconnect the charger and connect it to the computer because this is in Hungarian and I don't understand a word. Okay, I have trusted the PC. So now let me share you the PC screen. I'm gonna try with iDevice Panic Log Analyzer. Yeah, 12 mini and I'm gonna read logs if it ever works. All right, so let's go with the newest one. Okay, and it says missing sensors TG0B, TG0V, right? That's the battery. Again, TG0B, TG0V, and PRS1. So this is battery, and PRS1 is uh, the pressure sensor which is on the um, charging port. This is again missing the battery lines. So these are all from the same day. Battery lines, battery lines, battery lines, battery lines. Okay, I'm gonna delete the logs. Yeah, so we have no more panic logs on the device. And I'm gonna shut down the phone all right so phone is off and uh i'm gonna open it and uh, pause it until it's open because it's extremely cracked so this screen you don't see it very well but it has cracks all around so it's gonna take a while for me to open it and uh, we're gonna have a look together and see what's going on there all right so screen is off this looks terrible. And a lot of dust, I don't know what it is here. Oh. Okay, weird. So let's remove these shields and have a look at it. I'm gonna first remove this one. As I said, look, the battery is replaced. It's not an original battery. Let's remove the battery connector. Let's remove the screen. And let's remove also the other shield. All right, so let's have a look under the microscope and see how that looks like. Mm. 
Okay, so the connector is not bad. Um, well, it is a bit. Uh, let's have a look here. Let's remove this foam around it. It's weird that this is uh, the foam seems a bit heaten up, but maybe from the heater that has been used to remove the screen. Right, so when we have a problem with the communication with the battery, we always look around the connector. So first we check the pins, if the pins are fine. Ah, so this pin is broken, see? See, this pin is just dancing here. Uh, and this pin here should be connected here, right here but uh, it's effectively broken inside the connector um, yeah so we're gonna have to replace this connector unfortunately so we have to take the board out but as i said um, when the battery is not speaking with the board and we get those errors it means that there is no con communication on this one of these lines this is data line this is the clock line so there are some parts here some resistors and some capacitors and there's also a thing here it's a level shifter um, so those two lines get here to this chip which is uh, shifting between uh, 1.8 uh, volt line to 1.2 uh, volt line which is then able to speak with the PMIC so and with uh, with the charging circuit um, so this all looks good there's no broken parts here also we can't see any broken parts here um, so the only thing left is this broken pin the clock pin is broken so probably sometimes it's making a contact other times not so we're gonna have to replace the connector I hate 12 mini uh, I don't like how much you have to, how difficult it is to remove the board from the case. Mm, but we're gonna do it anyway, because there's no any other way. Alright, so first we have to remove this crap here. Okay, now we have to remove the Taptic engine. Alright, now we can remove the screws from the board. So water damage, judging by the sensors. Here it's red, yeah. and that's because of the screen. So the screen was uh, broken, and water got inside. That's life. That's not why it came here. So it came here to be repaired. All right. So now. I'm gonna have to remove the foam again like uh, iPhone X and 11 
uh, this is using a low melt alloy uh, so I don't want to put a lot of heat stress on the board yeah, so we're gonna use some uh, low melt solder on, uh, on the connector itself okay let's see uh, now I would prefer to effectively remove this using the solder iron without applying hot air so I'm just gonna force this off like this I don't want to heat up the board unnecessary Yeah, so I'm trying not to damage any of the parts around the connector. Alright, let's have a look what we have here. Okay, those parts look fine. I'm gonna add some, sol uh, some flux. And now I'm gonna add some 140 solder paste on my tip and we'll try to replace all that with fresh solder. This is a ground plane so it's gonna take a lot of heat but uh, if we replace this solder with a lower melt one, it would be much easier to work with. Okay, add some more. So seems good. I've done a mess there, but we're gonna clean it in a moment. Okay, so there's something weird here that I don't like. There should be a gap here. Yeah, where, the, where that pad is ripped. I think we have a problem here. Let me clean it up a bit. I think it... Hope it didn't break with the track. Mm. So in theory this should not touch this other part. Okay, this is better. Alright, so let's do a measurement here. We should have something like, let's see on the schematic. Like 0.4.5. So we're in dyno mode. You can watch the multimeter on the upper right corner. Let's probe on ground. So here we should have 0.4, yeah, 0.43. 
and here we should be close to 0 0.5 yeah 0 0.5 good all right so let's add some fresh solder there i don't really care if i'm gonna put solder on on these round round pads um, but just want to make sure we're not gonna bridge them together so otherwise it's fine to have solder on them all right let's see need a cleaner tip a bit too much here yeah, I'm gonna need some assistive heat from the hotter because the boards are not separated and uh, there is some heavy ground plane here Actually, need more solder on this pad here, not on this one. Oh, good. Okay, so I think we're good. Alright, now let's take another. I'm gonna leave that like that. I'm gonna search for a 12 board. Yep. Have one here, and we're gonna borrow the battery connector. So this one seems to be in a good shape. Use 380 50R. It's gonna take some time to heat up. out let's put our board in this socket alright so let's try to cook it So I think this is good. Okay, let's um, clean it a bit.
time. All right, so now uh, let's put some fresh uh, IPA and use the hand pump just to blow it away. That's for a finishing touch. seems to be uh, soldered properly. We force the pins like this. Yeah, that's solder too. Okay, let's do also a multimeter test. So again we should have like 0.4 something on both the data lines, data and clock line. Okay, 0.42 and here 0.43, right? Good. All right. So this is kind of it. I'm gonna clean the board, put it back together, um, and um, I think this uh, will gonna solve our issue. So thank you for watching. Give me a like, a subscribe, uh, and um, see you on the next one. Bye.